Thank you very much, Jeff. Good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you and Seth Waxman to this afternoon's third annual Robert H. Jackson Lecture at Chautauqua Institution. This lecture, this tradition and collaborative endeavor that involves the Jackson Center, but it should talk was, comes at a propitious time. For every July follows closely on the end of the Supreme Court's term, and is a moment of Supreme Court recess and public scrutiny. And no better place embodies the habit of public scrutiny, serious thought, reflection, and discussion than Chautauqua Institution. It also is propitious and appropriate that this lecture goes forward under Justice Jackson's name, for he, of course, was from his boyhood through the rest of his life a son of Chautauqua County and a serious student of Chautauqua Institution, a speaker to be true or from its platforms, but long before that, a serious, attentive member of its audiences. Today's speaker, Seth P. Waxman, is a former Solicitor General of the United States. He is I'll have to ask him what his number is. I came up with number 40 or perhaps number 42, depending on how one counts and how much one cares about Jackie Robinson uh, in the string of solicitors general in our country. The solicitor general is often referred to as the 10th justice. The solicitor general is the one senior officer in the Department of Justice who by law is required to be learned in the law. And in our nation's history, up to the present, and in our hopes for the future, the Solicitor Generalship embodies the best of the American legal profession. That's captured in the roster of some of the people who have held that office. William Howard Taft, John W. Davis, Archibald Cox, Erwin Griswold, Robert Bork, Kenneth Starr, Theodore Olson, and Seth Waxman. The tradition of a Jackson lecture here at Chautauqua focusing on legal aspects in the Supreme Court uh, is a three-year tradition. And Mr. Waxman today walks in illustrious footsteps of his predecessors. But I want to focus for a moment on some other predecessors because those are the previous solicitors general who have preceded him as Chautauqua Institution speakers. The first I'll call to mind, and it's a lovely coincidence that I discovered, was literally 70 years ago today, when the sitting Solicitor General of the United States, Stanley Foreman Reed, spoke on the topic of the future of states in the federal system. Stanley Reed was Franklin Roosevelt's second Solicitor General, and not long after he spoke here on that July 9, 1937, he was appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States, which created a vacancy, which led Roosevelt to appoint the second of the predecessors I'd like to call to mind, Robert H. Jackson, to be Solicitor General of the United States. In 1937, Jackson, an Assistant Attorney General, a Chautauqua County lawyer, was Stanley Reed's host when Solicitor General Reed was the speaker here at Chautauqua. He became his successor in that office. He later became his colleague on the Supreme Court. Ten years later, July of 1947, Justice Jackson was Chautauqua's speaker on the 4th of July on the weighty topic of American ideals and Nuremberg. The third predecessor of Paul to mind was not yet Solicitor General when he spoke here on August 6, 1957. He was instead Director Counsel of the NAACP, Thurgood Marshall. And Thurgood Marshall's topic here at Chautauqua, just short of 50 years ago, was segregation desegregation, and integration as of today. And oh, what a weighty title that would be to take on at this moment, but I digress. Thurgood Marshall, of course, went on to be appointed a Federal Circuit Judge, and then Solicitor General of the United States by Lyndon Johnson, and then a Justice of the Supreme Court. In those footsteps, a fourth SG, former, future, etc. I'm being a little bit loose with the category, uh, today stands Seth Waxman. You know, I think, from the Daily and from other reading, his distinguished biography, he's a graduate of Harvard College, he was a Rockefeller Fellow in Kenya, a graduate of Yale Law School, a law clerk to the Honorable Gerhard Wiesel, one of the giants of the federal bench, an illustrious and successful private practitioner, and from November of 1997 until January of 2001,
the Solicitor General of the United States, appointed by President Clinton. Seth Waxman today is a partner in the law firm of Wilmer Hale, and he is one of the nation's leading, most distinguished, most eloquent, and most successful Supreme Court advocates, which is what the Solicitor General does for the government, but what increasingly has become an elite, really high-quality, specialist piece of the American bar on the private side of litigation. Again, I'll ask him what his count is. I get 49 or 50 as the number of Supreme Court cases that Seth Waxman has argued, including three in the just completed term of the court. Seth Waxman brings to this podium, to Chautauqua Institution, to the offices he, he has held, a distinguished ability, career trajectory, and as a personal point I may say with hope, a future in public service. But whether in government or out of government, he embodies the high ideals of Robert H. Jackson, of the Office of the Solicitor General of the United States, and frankly, of the American legal profession itself, which in its high forms, whether one is a government lawyer or a private practitioner, is public service. And so it's my great pleasure to welcome Seth Waxman, the Robert H. Jackson lecturer, who will address the topic of the evolving tentative role of the United States courts in the, in the war on terror. Thank you.